Hi, again, it's Lori Lane Zucker, founder and CEO of Impact Entrepreneur, and we're here at the SOCAP conference, the largest impact investing conference in the world in San Francisco, California, and I'm doing a series of interviews for Impact Entrepreneur TV, our YouTube channel. Um, I am here with Kristen Hall, and Kristen, welcome, and uh, tell us what, um, uh, what the name of your company is. I'm Kristen and our, oh, okay, great. Uh, NIA Impact Capital. NIA means intention and purpose. And so we are helping people invest their money with intention and purpose. And you're based where? In Oakland, California, right here. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, give me a sense of some of the, your, the people you work with. Are they their, their companies, their funds, investors? So we run a public equities portfolio, so helping people invest into the public markets along six solution themes with a gender lens. And so we do lots of activism as well, so we are working with the companies in our portfolio in an activist way as we invest alongside them. And then our clients are everyone from men, women, families, uh, nonprofits, endowments that want to have their money invested with their values. Now, you've been doing this for a while, impact investing, yes? I have, since 2007. Yeah, so right when it came out, it started uh, at, under that rubric. Uh, so you've seen a tremendous evolution, as of all, uh, all of us others who have also been in the space for a long time. Um, how would you characterize where we are right now? Where is impact investing, and particularly kind of through the lens of what you're doing? Sure, so we're at an exciting time. Um, it's been exciting since the beginning, but it was really a side conversation. And now, particularly with a public equities product, lots of the larger banks are seeing that their clients really want this. And so the extent that we can bring this retail um, and to have it just be good investing, we're almost there. I think with the climate crisis heightening, people are connecting the dots between what their investments are doing and the economy and the world that we want to live in. And and how can we direct our money into that economy? And so this really is going to just be smart investing very soon. Do you do mostly direct investing or are you also investing in funds? So, well, for the public equities product, that oh, is public specific companies. Um, we also have NIA community investments that is direct and then also some funds that are real change makers. Um, but for NIA Global Solutions, which is the public equities product, that is across cap size, so small to large and then also global. So we're looking at companies around the world. So tell me about the criteria that you're using to... Um, uh, to, to you know when you when you identify companies to invest in what kind of standards do you have what what is your uh, what, what is the set of criteria and what do you look for in terms of how those companies are managing the impact measurement and management aspects of, of what they do Sure. So we could talk for hours about our due diligence process, but I'll say a few simple things. We are looking across six solution themes and we start with products and services. So where is the revenue coming from for a company? What is a company's reason for being according to their products and services? And do those align with the NIA six solution themes, which are highly um, aligned with the UN sustainability goals. So we meet 16 of the 17 within our six solution themes. So we, um, unlike an index, we're not starting with a cap size. Um, for us, we really care about, is this really important? Um, is this getting done? And then does the management team have the ability to execute? And how do you deal with the uh, age old question in impact investing space of whether the investor should expect to uh, have a concessionary type of return or uh, versus market or market beating returns? Right, so we at NIA are trying to redefine what are market returns and so I think it really depends on the sector. I mean, as long as we're not extracting, so we're really looking at renewable and regenerative and there actually are quite a bit of growth areas um, where you can expect beyond market returns. Um, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, the level of risk and then how much it's needed. Um, so that's a, it's a tricky question. If you're working with the poorest of the poor and you're trying to get a really high return, then maybe you want to think about what the purpose of that capital is. When we're investing in publicly traded companies that are global, that are so solving solutions um, that are needed worldwide, you can expect a good return. 
So we have at Impact Entrepreneur a, a couple of webinar series that we run and pipe out to our global network. And the last webinar that we did was with John Fullerton of the Capital Institute, who, as you probably know, is a very strong and articulate advocate for regenerative economy, right, and re regenerative capitalism. Um, with, so kind of with that conversation in my mind, I ask, you know, how does regenerative business fit with public equities? How many public companies, particularly multinationals, are embracing regenerative principles and practices in their work, and how are they doing it? Well, so I would say at the moment it's few and far between, but just like impact investing, our corporations are changing as well. Um, sometimes for their own business model and sometimes because society demands that. Um, as far as regenerative, are easy to look at our energy sector within NIA because we are looking at wind, solar, and waves, and we're also looking at financing those industries. So when we're thinking about solar, um, it drops from the sky for free, right? And that keeps happening almost every day. Um, technology prices come down, that's what they do, you know, so things get cheaper and cheaper. So as our renewable technologies become more and more affordable, we're using renewable and regenerative energy to do that. Um, Healthcare-wise, um, we're looking at circular economy plays there. So can we be sending out, um, well both, I guess in healthcare, we're really looking at access and innovation, and then how can we be um, recirculating different products within that, and so we have several companies working along those lines. Um, so, question about the uh, kind of mindset of the high net worth investors that you deal with. Generally speaking, and I'm sure there's a variety of approaches here, but are you seeing an evolution uh, f kind of toward or way, uh, kind of beyond saying I want to do a, you know, a discrete portion of my net worth and putting that toward impact, toward I want to put 100% of my capital, ideally toward impact type investments. Are you seeing many of those types of people or are we still kind of just, you know, take, I'd like to do 5% on impact? So I'm in a lot of the conversations where people say they're going to do 100%. Um, I would say people definitely think about buckets and is there a philanthropic bucket? Is there an impact bucket? Um, I think there's oftentimes a gender lens bucket. Um, I think as we talked about earlier, as we move towards this just becoming smart investing, that will kind of seep in across the portfolio. Um, I would say the non-impact investors are going to move quicker. They're not getting caught up in terms. They're not getting caught up in what's the right asset class. They're really just moving money. Um, and I think maybe the ESG movement is helping with that. There, of course, there's greenwashing and pinkwashing within all of that. Um, and yet I do see money moving towards solutions. And a, a, obviously the role, one of the roles that you're, important roles that you're playing is to kind of minim, minimize the chances of investing in, in greenwashing, right? I would hope so. I think we're probably the, the closest to a pure play in public markets. And so if we can emanate that and be a standard for public market investing, I think that will help a lot. Um, one thing just to say is I'm really noticing that women are moving quicker, sooner, faster, and higher amounts of dollars. Um, and that's, I guess, encouraging because we do have this wealth transfer happening. And so there will be a lot of money in the hands of women. And so the fact that they are ready to move into the solutions, it makes sense to them. Um, they want to see their portfolios um, reflecting them in their communities. Um, and so that's encouraging. Yeah, and I, I saw a statistic recently that in this next 20, 30 years, in this massive transfer of trillions of dollars of wealth to younger generations, that actually uh, 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 higher than 50% of, of that money is going to be in the hands of women. Um, and it's I think it's a significantly above 50% actually. Uh, so that is very hopeful in, in my opinion. Financial industry has to prepare for that. Um, I don't think it's ready for that wave. And yet, as we know, and as I'm seeing, our industry changes by client request and client demand. So to the extent that we can help women raise their voices for the products and services that they need within the financial industry, um, we'll make some changes. Yeah. I attend, a, as I'm sure you do, quite a few family office conferences and summits, and it's been amazing over the last two, three years, just that uh, the changes that are happening in those conferences 
with a few years ago, impact anything impact investing was maybe one or two panels. Now it's coming to dominate much of the conversation at some of these conferences, and and it's being driven by these new new clients who are who are coming into the money and saying, we want to do this, and a lot of the financial advisors are saying, well, okay, how do you do that? And, uh, yeah, the good ones are saying, okay, how do you do it? A lot of them are um, actually being. Um, saying you can't do this and you can't get the returns. And I think a lot of women are hearing from traditional financial advisors that this can't be done. And yet their inner wisdom is saying, actually, no, this is where this money needs to be moving. So that uh, there is a little bit of pushback still. Give me your website address so we can, people who are interested in getting more information can find you. Okay, I love that, thank you. Um, www.niaimpactcapital.com. Um, Spell it. NIA, and it's actually a Swahili word that means intention and purpose. So niaimpactcapital.com. Wonderful. Kristen, thank you so much for stopping by. Take One you. more thing. Um, we also have, for those that are interested in learning about um, the issues, I do write a Money Doula blog, and that is at moneydoula.org. Um, and actually, you can reach that. You better spell that. Okay. Money, M-O-N-E-Y, and then doula, um, D-O-U-L-A. Um, so Dot com. Dot org. Dot org. Yes. Um, small pieces about um, how to put your feminism into your finances, um, why investing in fossil fuels might not be good for your balance sheet, um, and then everything about weapons, reducing them from your portfolio, and how to talk to your advisor about doing this work. Kristen, thank you so much.